There's a pretty common pattern we find in the Gospels when Jesus makes a big, important point. Jesus makes a declaration that appears to be pretty simple and straightforward, and his listeners turn into amateur debaters who want to argue every point, trying to find a loophole. Well, one of the most significant of these situations is when a lawyer asks Jesus what he has to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? What follows is one of the most well-known parables in the Bible. Jesus tells of a man on the dangerous road from Jerusalem to Jericho who is attacked, beaten, and left for dead. And while he was lying there, a priest walked by. Seeing the man, the priest crossed to the other side of the road. Next came a Levite who also crossed to the other side in order to avoid the man. But then came a Samaritan. This good Samaritan, overwhelmed by compassion, tended to the man's wounds, put him on his animal, and took him to an inn. He gave the innkeeper two days worth of wages and told him when he came back, he would pay the innkeeper more if it was required. Finished with his story, Jesus asked the lawyer, who was a neighbor to the man who was attacked? The one who showed him mercy, he said. And Jesus' response, go and do likewise. As of today, more than 30 of our nation's governors have made some sort of decree that the refugees from Syria will not be allowed into their states, including the states that are served by the Senate of Mid-America. They say they have good reasons, mostly having to do with national security and the safety and well-being of our citizens. There's little debate as to whether the governors can actually do this. Welcoming refugees is a federal matter, not a state one, but I'm not a politician or an expert on security, and, and frankly, that's not really what's concerning me right now. My concern is one as a person of faith, specifically one who professes faith in Jesus Christ. As followers of the gospel, our concern has to be one of care and compassion, of concern for another's well-being before our own. This call to self-sacrifice in the service of others, it's a pretty simple, straightforward call we find in our Bible. You see, just like our governors, the priest and the Levite probably had good reasons for avoiding the man on the road too. The text never says, but I always assume that the priest and the Levite thought that the guy was dead. And so as professionally religious people, they knew coming into contact with a dead body would make them unclean. Well, naturally, the Samaritan wouldn't have any of those concerns. But here's the thing. Contrasting the Good Samaritan with the priest and the Levi, that's not even the point of the story. New Testament scholar Amy Jill Levine points out that in telling this parable, Jesus was actually subverting a very common storytelling formula. In the minds of the first listeners, after Jesus said a priest and a Levite, they expected him to say, and a Jew were walking down the road. That's the way the story always went. A priest, a Levite, and a Jew. It's like how we sometimes start jokes with things like a priest, a rabbi, and a preacher walked into a bar. They thought that Jesus was going to tell them, the priest and the Levite have good reasons for avoiding the man, but you, you good Jews, let me tell you how you should behave. And so when Jesus says, and a Samaritan, they know something's up. You see, Samaritan was an insult used by Jews. They regularly called Samaritans dogs and half-breeds, and, and these kinds of opinions easily led to the Jews believing that Samaritans were inherently despicable. They were expecting to hear a story about what a good Jew was supposed to do, and instead, they learned a lesson about care and compassion featuring someone they despised, a good Samaritan. So when this story is over and Jesus asked who best fulfilled the law that God gave the people, I'm sure it was with great frustration that the lawyer had to admit it was the Samaritan. In fact, he couldn't even bring himself to say the word. He said, the one who showed him mercy. Bless his heart. So we can talk and debate and argue all day long as to why the priest, the Levite, or our governors are doing what they're doing. But at the end of the day, good Christians, the question is what our response should be. What does it look like for us, good Christians, to tend to the dying man lying on the side of the road? What does it look like for us, good Christians, to care for refugees and victims of attacks all around the world? Well, here's what I hope. May we be the people who follow our refugee Lord's commands to love our neighbors as ourselves. May we be the people who understand that loving our neighbor is one of the best ways to love our God. May we be the people who understand that our neighbor is anyone who is in need.